I took a text to image model and I drove it to the brink of madness. And what I did is I trained it on an impossible task, one that was far beyond the model's capabilities. And as it tried and tried and failed and failed to achieve that outcome, it slowly, slowly destroyed its own internal structure. And as this process progresses, I forced it to output images at each step. And I've taken all those images and I've compiled them into a single video so that you and I can watch this model slowly descend into insanity. Personally, I think the video is pretty cool just by itself, but it gets a lot cooler once you understand the mechanics behind what's going on. So here's how we're gonna structure this video. So first we're gonna talk about what a mad model looks like and how I accidentally created one while trying to achieve something else. After that, we're gonna go a little bit deeper and we're gonna talk about how model training works in general and how if you do it incorrectly, the internal structure of a model can break down and the model can lose touch with reality. Finally, we're gonna talk about animation and how the animation that you're about to see at the end of this video is sort of different from all the other AI art animations you've seen so far. Okay, so what was I trying to do? I was trying to use a open source text to image model and see if I could train it to be as good as this other proprietary text to image model just by taking images from that proprietary model and training the open source model on those images. This is sort of a thing in the literature, it's called, it's called knowledge distillation, where you take an, an already existing powerful model and you use its output to train another model to be like kind of exactly like it. So I did tons of experiments. This project took way too long. Uh, if you wanna see the research that I did, there's a link in the description to an article I wrote about it. Basically I failed. I was not able to achieve what I wanted, but I did notice this cool thing at low numbers of steps, the model still understands what a dog is. But as you go further down, it gets more artistic and it forgets what a dog is and starts giving you strange monsters and things. And I thought, well, okay, well, what if we just kick that up to 11? You know, what kind of creatures, what kind of fascinating environments are gonna exist if you just keep training the model on this impossible task and keep forcing it to keep trying? until it just breaks itself. So this is sort of the standard way of doing machine learning in the modern era. Um, you have this model, which is a big pile of algebra. Don't have to worry about it too much. But the point is it'll take some kind of an input and produce an output. So maybe it'll take an image and it has to give you the class of that image. And the way that you sort of train these models is you know for each image beforehand what the correct class is. And you compare the correct class to the outcome that the model's given you. And then you do something called gradient descent, which is a really tricky thing, but essentially you use calculus to work out which bits of your model contributed most to that favorable car outcome. And then you work out how to change your model a little bit more so that the car outcome becomes even more likely next time you have a similar image. And having done all that, you then perform a small update to your model to make it more likely to do the same thing again next time when you have a similar image. And so that's the good path. And then in the bad path where it gave you the wrong label, you kind of just do the same thing again. You use your fancy calculus to work out which bits of the model contributed most to that bad outcome. And then you also, you do your calculus to work out how you should change them in order to avoid that bad outcome next time. And then you perform another update to change those bad bits of the model and make your model less likely to give you this kind of a, a label when it gets this kind of an image. So it's sort of this process where you give it an input, it gives you an output, and then you change the model. You sort of reward or punish it based on whether or not the outcome was good. In our case, we're working with image generation models. So we have a label, and we have some noise and we feed both of those in and we already know what we're expecting uh, in the outcome. And then the model will give us an image as an output and then based on how similar the image is to the thing that we're expecting, we give it an update, either like a good update or a bad update. We like punish it or reward it, sort of. Okay, so that's like the standard way that you train one of these models, but we're not trying to train a model, we're trying to make a model go insane. So what do we do? Well, firstly, we used something called Dream Booth, which you can read the paper um, if you want. The link is in the description. 
and we made a few modifications with it. So usually with Dream Booth training, you're supposed to have three to five images of the same subject. In this case, I got 1,601 images of a huge diverse array of subjects created using Midjourney v4. The only guidance I gave the model was this string, mjz. And the idea was that when you put in mjz, it would give you an output image that was similar to all of these input images. Now, as I learned with the huge number of experiments I had done earlier, this is too difficult. Stable diffusion models cannot achieve this task. There's too much variety in here for the model to learn in a sensible manner. It actually turns out to be too hard for the model to generate an image that coincides with all of these images at once, given how diverse the images are. So what's gonna happen is the model is just gonna keep getting penalized and the internal structure of the model will keep changing. And slowly, slowly, because it keeps changing its internal structure to try to achieve this very hard task, it'll lose all of the initial structure it had that allowed it to understand concepts. And what we're looking for is this kind of progression where it starts off, yep, kind of knowing what the prompt's looking for, a very angry man, and slowly gets darker and more mysterious and weird until it's just giving you very strange outcomes. So what I did is as I run this process, Every 10 steps, I got it to generate four images with exactly the same C, with exactly the same prompt. And as the training progresses, you can see those images get stranger and stranger. Now there's one more thing that I want to point out. So usually when we do animation with AI art, the process looks something like this. You lock a seed in, have a specific seed, and you freeze the model so the model's not changing. And then you give a prompt to the model the model generates an image. You then pass the same image back to the model with maybe a new prompt, um, and then you generate a slightly different image. Using this method, you can kind of get these smooth transitions between different AI art scenes. Uh, sometimes you'll also feed in like different seeds to help the generations be a little bit more diverse, but this is kind of the way it works. And the model, importantly, is always frozen. Now, in this case, what we're doing is we're locking the seed and we're locking the prompt. We're making sure those are staying the same. We're not feeding the image back in, but what we are doing is we are making updates to the model. So rather than creating a transition based on inputs to the model, we're actually creating a transition by altering the model itself directly. In this case, uh, we're trying to make the model go more and more artistic until nothing makes sense at all. But, you know, presumably you could do other interesting things to the model. At the moment, this is really computationally expensive. It took me eight hours to generate what you're about to see. But maybe in the future, this might be a way of doing animation where the transition that you witness as a viewer is actually representative of a transition that's occurring to the model. So hopefully now you have all the context you need to understand what you're about to see. Um, this project was a bit different from what I usually do, and it took a lot longer. So if you kind of like this kind of content, uh, leave a like or something so that I know people are actually appreciating it and I can justify spending more time on it. If you want to do something similar, I've included a notebook and I've included a lot of details in the description. Um, I actually thought the effect was pretty cool. So, enjoy. <laughs>